Hello and welcome back to Spirit of Nature Art and another video tutorial. And today we are working again in this little altered book here and I've already taken out some pages because I want to work with them flat outside of the book and you'll see why. I've got this beautiful selection of distress inks here uh, I'm about to start to colour up this page nice and bright and vivid. It's feeling a bit kind of autumnal here, the days are starting to get darker and colder and I just really wanted to capture the kind of vibrancy of summer before it kind of disappeared entirely. So I am using a technique here where I am smushing my page into the distress ink. So I'm putting the distress ink onto my craft mat, I'm putting a little bit of water on it, I'm running my fingers through it so that it's no longer a square splodge and then I'm smushing my page in. In between each time I do that, I dry the layer. Now the reason I do this, if I put distress ink is water activated. So if I put wet on wet, as in with any medium, it's just going to turn to mush, basically. We're gonna get mud. Wet on wet, the paint colors are going to um, mix together. So. If I dry in between each layer, the layers build up rather than mush into each other. So you'll notice here, as I'm doing this, it, at each layer I add on, the color becomes more vibrant because that color is sitting on top of the color that's beneath it. I'm also getting this texture here as I am dabbing the page into the colour that's left on the craft mat there. So there we go, I'm putting some ink on the craft mat, spraying it with a little bit of water to activate it, then putting the page into the area that I want it to. So I'm building up three areas of colour here. Uh, I'm going to be adding the other colours around it. I like to, um, to go in with odd numbers <laughs> when I am building up my colours like this. Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm not trained in art, I've got no idea if it's a specific composition thing, but I just find odd numbers uh, quite enjoyable to look at. I'm bringing in, um, so that first colour I used was six, something, I can't remember, I'll put the colours below. This is Peacock um, and I'm placing the blue next to the green because I know that those colours will, uh, if they do activate, won't turn to mud. So because Distress Ink is water activated, there's, even though I'm drying in between layers, I'm putting wet on to uh, that dryer dry layer beneath, there's a chance that's going to activate a little bit. And so you'll see where that blue and that green meet, uh, that there is a little bit of those colours merging, um, but the large majority of it are those separate layers, layering upon layer upon layer. So it being careful which colours we put next to each other so that there's not that potential for mud. So here you'll see I'm putting the pink next to the, uh, the green and the blue. I know that that pink, there's a chance we might get a little bit of orange there, um, but as you'll see, doing that drying in between, mostly what we're getting is that pink sitting on top of the green below. And again, if that pink mixes with the blue, we're gonna get purple, which is fine, because I like some purple, and I'm even going to add some in anyway. So this is just a repetitive process, keeping on building up those layers until you're happy with the colors that you've got, the vibrancy that you've got, and the texture. So here I'm adding in that purple. Again, I'm keeping that purple. If you notice, I'm keeping that purple away from the green because that will definitely turn to mud if those two uh, start to mix with each other. So although I'm, I'm, it's getting a little bit close to the green there, I'm keeping it well away from it. And then the space in between the purple and the green, I'm putting pink that pink that might give us a little bit of orange if it activates uh, and if it mixes with the purple there well actually that works really nicely so building these layers up layer upon layer um, I've sped this up massively for you guys so you don't have to sit and watch me uh, dabbing and drying and dabbing and drying um, probably this mm, I don't know probably took me a good hour 
to do this um, this page to get the colours on it in this way. It's something you need to have a bit of patience for uh, and it's something that you may need to kind of walk away and come back to um, so that you can uh, make sure that you're really getting those colours that you want. So I just keep going back to those areas, filling in the gaps, just starting to fill up that page with those lovely vibrant colours. You can see here why it's so important which colours you choose because you want them not only to complement each other but you can create more colours by where the colours meet. So picking your colours, play, play around on a blank piece of paper that doesn't matter on first. See which colours that you like sitting next to each other and the potential for more colours that you can create through blending those colours together. It's also very messy, you're going to get it all over your hands, I'll just warn you now. <laughs> So you can see how that page starts to really build that vibrancy, that texture. Um, and just again, you can see I'm just repeating over and over. The more I dab the page, the more texture I get, the more of those lovely uh, um, kind of uh, watery kind of um, movement uh, textures that you get from the Distress Ink. I have to say this is one of the favorite, my favorite things to do with Distress Ink, uh, not just because it's messy, but just because it looks so nice as well. And now I want to bring out that vibrancy even more. I really want this page to pop. So this again is one of the really great things about Distress Ink. You can use it in quite a few different ways. So I'm just using an ink, uh, an ink blending tool now and going in with those same colours and just using my ink blending tool to just go over the top of that colour just to pop it a little bit more. It also helps me to blend those colours um, where they meet a lot better as well. So you can see that vibrancy really coming up. And you could say, well, Caroline, why didn't you just go in and use your Distress Inks in that way in the first place? But then we wouldn't have got all of that lovely, yummy texture going on in the background, which is something that I really like. The other reason I like this technique is because I've used Distress Ink here, not Distress Oxide. Distress Ink has that transparency. So I can still see the page underneath. I can see the words underneath. If I'd used Distress Oxide, um, that is a lot more opaque. We wouldn't necessarily see what's underneath. I also purposefully did not gesso this page before I started because I wanted these uh, colours to sink into the page and create this vibrancy. If I'd put a layer of gesso on first, it would have created a whole different effect. Um, it would have moved across the page rather than sat into the page. Uh, and you've seen me do that on some of my other videos where I've gessoed first before I've used the Distress Ink. So both techniques are brilliant, but they give you very different outcomes. So as you see here, this page is really popping, which is exactly what I wanted to do. So I'm just making sure this is really dry now. Um, and then I'm going to set that aside and start to work on the other aspect of my page, uh, which is this beautiful butterfly that is going to fly out from the page. I really wanted to contrast uh, with that beautiful colour because in the garden I've been seeing the last kind of well, I say butterflies, I think they're moths really. These last moths that I'm seeing around are very white uh, and I really wanted to capture that. So I've taken another blank page out of the book and I'm just gessoing it so that I can um, still see some of the page beneath because that's what I want to do. But I also want the background for my butterfly. I want it to, to be very black and white. I want it to feel like these butterflies or moths that I have been seeing in the garden as the season starts to change. So I'm just painting some gesso because it gives me that white but it also gives that slight transparency so I can see the words of the page underneath. And just making sure that that is absolutely dry before I go and do the next step. Because what I'm going to be doing is using uh, this lovely butterfly stamp here to do some embossing. So I'm using Versafine Black ink here, just a normal Versafine Black because it really picks up the details and there's a lot of detail on this stamp. So I'm stamping on to my gessoed page here, giving it a good push down, and then I'm using a clear embossing powder so that it picks up the black of that ink. 
So just popping uh, the leftover powder back in the jar and always putting the lid on before I get my heat gun out so I don't blow it all away. And then just heating that up so that that black ink, excuse me, black ink embosses. Doesn't that look lovely? That, do you know what that really captures? The, uh, these moths that I've seen flying around the garden, that lovely clear white and black, really stark and contrasting. So I want this to sit in the middle of my page and there's a reason why I didn't stamp into the book directly because I would never have got that really crisp image because of the center of the page. So I'm kind of putting the center of the page back in by doing it this way. So I'm going to cut my butterfly out and stick it back in to the page so that it feels like it was, it was just another kind of center page in that spread. So I'm just gonna fussy cut uh, around this now. And you'll see as I'm cutting, I try to save the antenna. I don't know why I bothered to be honest with you. I knew I would never be able to do it, but I couldn't help myself but try and, and cut around them. Um, but I do, um, I do fix that later on uh, in actually a way that uh, I really, really liked in the end. So this is why I worked on blank pages taken out of the book. I wouldn't have been able to get that, do that smushing technique whilst it was still in the book because there's that central spine. I wouldn't have got right into there and I wouldn't have got this really nice crisp stamped image if I'd stamped straight into the book. So once I have cut round my butterfly, then it's time to almost reassemble and put those pages back into the book to create my spread. So I'm just using some uh, high tack glue here just to, to uh, cover the back of my butterfly and put it straight in the center. Before I then go in with my craft knife, craft knife, oh dear, my craft knife and my cutting mat and cut round that butterfly. So that means we get two layers of the page, which means the butterfly's wings are uh, a bit more sturdy. And it means that um, it can stand out from the page as its own kind of 3D element. So just turning the book as I cut, so it just means that I'm always using the sharpest bit of the craft knife, going in there with my little scissors as well, just to help me take the rest of the page away. This is sped up. <laughs> Take your time if you are cutting and using a craft knife. The sharper the knife, the better the cut, but of course the more likely you might um, hurt yourself. So just take your time, turn the book, cut little pieces that make it easier to get the pieces out, just like I'm doing here. very soon. So there we have my uh, lovely 
black and white contrasting butterfly sitting right in the center of the spread now, which is exactly where I wanted it to be. So now it's time to bring back that lovely colorful page that's really gonna help it pop out. So I'm just putting a slice down part of the center of the page there so I can just slip it behind the butterfly there back into position where it was originally taken from. And now it's time to stick that into place, just sticking it to the pages before and after it. So again, we get a nice steady page from that extra thickness and it's just given us that opportunity to take the page out of the book and work with it in a different way. I'm just, I, this glue is just the glue I had to hand. It's a bit less wet than the tacky glue. So because this page had already been wetted quite a bit with the Distress Inks, uh, I was just conscious of, of um, not wetting it any further. So this glue, um, it's, yeah, it's, it's a cross between the tacky glue and the print stick really. So not as wet. Uh, and then just protecting that lovely colorful page in the background there so that I can uh, ink up the edges of that butterfly where I've cut around it, just going in with the same black VersaFine ink and an ink blending tool just to be able to get in and hide all those white lines from where I've cut the butterfly out. And whilst I have that ink out now, oh actually I think I'm using uh, a dark purple ink to start with just to edge those pages. And then I think I go in with the black as well. Just really helps to bring together the element in the middle there of the butterfly, the black in the butterfly. If I use a colour in one area, I like to use it in more than one. Uh, and I'm just masking my butterfly now. I just stamped it out again on a piece of paper and cut it out and put that over the top so I could mask my butterfly so I could stamp this lovely stamp over the top to give it back its wonderful antennae, far better antennae than were the, there before, these lovely, beautiful, um, flourishing antennae. So I just used that VersaFine ink again uh, and uh, I think that's a good thing when you are using stamped images like this is you can, yeah, you can stamp them again on a bit of scrap paper, cut them out and use them as a mask to protect the area you've already got. I'm just going in with a Posca pen here just to really bring out some of those flourishes and to uh, help them to really connect with the butterfly properly. Uh, so again, stamping into that middle area, you're not always going to get a very crisp um, image because the book's a little bit wibbly wobbly. Uh, but because it's just black, I can go straight in with my Posca pen and um, embellish what is already there. I love that flourish so much that I decided I wanted to add that detail into the background as well. And I really like the kind of monochromatic effect of stamping the same color on top of a color that's already there. So I'm using a turquoise, um, this is a, a, another VersaFine, this is the, hmm, I'll put the colors below, I can never remember what they're called. Uh, but using the same color, I'm using permanent ink 
specifically I'm not going back in with the distress inks here because it will just sink in to what's already there so I'm going in with the permanent ink so that it does sit more on top so you see I've got a turquoise I've got a purple and I've got a pink and I'm using those to stamp over those same colors in the distress so that it kind of stands out but it's still in the background so it just starts to bring the elements of the butterfly and the background together I love that kind of like this is I love this stamp mm, I'm trying to think it might be an all and create I think it is um, I like their stuff a lot and I really like this flourish you can use it in so many different ways I'm just using parts of it you'll notice here uh, as I'm stamping and just starting to bring those edges in I'm almost kind of vignetting the whole page with these stamps here Feels like that butterfly's right in the center of a flower, doesn't it? And it's all the wonderful, oh, stamen that's the word I'm thinking of. Oh, the stamen and all the different kind of parts inside the flower it looks like the butterfly sat right in the center. And I want to really enhance that kind of vignetting effect now, so I'm going back in with some black archival ink. Uh, no reason why it's the archival one and not the first and fine one, it's just the one that happened to be there. And just going around and uh, adding that around the edge really makes a difference. It really starts to um, kind of frame that page, bring the kind of black element of the butterfly into the background and draws your eye into the middle. And finally, I just wanted to add a word to the page. And when the same stamp set comes this lovely, uh, kind of quite grungy butterfly word, all done in different letters, just seem to fit that page quite well. Again, just using my Posca pen to bring out some of the details that didn't quite stamp perfectly. But the point of these kind of grungy looking stamps is they don't look perfect anyway, but just wanted to add in bits where I felt it was needed. And there we go, the finished piece. I really like this. It was just, it was exactly what I needed, something bright and colorful, a little bit messy, but actually quite simple in its making. Uh, and I love having a butterfly popping out from the page, who doesn't? I hope you like it as much as I do, and I hope I'll see you soon for another video tutorial.